I'm with Metal Gods TV and I am with the creator at Bloodstock. How you doing man? Doing alright. This is, I saw you last time you were here, it was put on a really good show. I mean, have you, you. Got, have you got uh, a different set this time? Have you got more oh, stuff? Oh yeah, 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 we have a longer set this time and uh, hopefully some different songs. I can't remember the last time we were here, but yeah, uh, yeah I think we have uh, some more old stuff and some different new stuff. <laughs> I'm looking but, forward to it. Yeah, yeah, it should be good. It should be good. It, yeah, we played a couple of festivals with this set list and it always worked. It hopefully works here as well. Yeah. And what's it like, sort of, your, your cluster's sort of legends now, you know, sort of getting legend status in the do rock. We? In, yeah, I think oh so. <laughs> do you, do you don't feel like legends? I feel, I don't know, man. It's, I, 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 I guess it's because we've been around for so long, the people call us legendary or whatever. But I, to me, it's. I live in the moment, in, in, in this moment right now, and I think if we can't prove um, our legendary status on stage, stage every night, then it's worthless. So it's up to us, you know. I mean, whatever people want to um, say about the band. Now, of course, we've we've been like I said, we've been around, and we've been on a couple of albums, but I think it's always important to look into the future rather than looking back, you know. So um, yeah. Legendary status is fine to me with me, but um, it's important to keep it up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Hordes of Chaos, I thought was absolutely phenomenal. Thank you, thank you very much. Have we got in? Have you got more stuff in the offing like that? Yeah, we will be um, going in. We go. We go. We're going to the studio in um, January, and we will be working with um, a great producer from Sweden called Jens Bockren. He is um, the producer who did um, some of OPEF stuff. Oh, yeah. He did um, stuff for Symphony X, I think, and he did uh, most of the math albums, the, the latest ones. And um, I think he, he gets like a nice guitar tone and he's, he seems to be really, really good. I've, I've sent him some demos already and we're discussing um, the stuff online and uh, it should be good. So it's your idea to go to this guy, not the other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, um, I, I, you know, I always keep my eyes open. Who is the, uh, who's, who's a good producer for creator to work with? And we're always looking for fresh blood, you know. And um, Jens is, is the man, I guess. Well, production makes the album. I mean, if you it's it's back for definitely, definitely, definitely. And um, you know, nowadays you get like a lot of like it's either like it's either like too produced in a, in a bad way, yeah. or it's always just just. Um, you have to find like the the, 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 the thin line between um, at, at having a modern production without this computerized stuff, you know. And um, I think the producers we've worked with in the past, we had that, you know. Uh, working with Andy Sneap was, in my opinion, my, one of my the best experiences we've ever had. Yeah. And um, even back in the day, people like Randy Burns, you know, we always try to keep the um, get. The, the most, the best producers possible at a certain time for metal, yeah. and um, same with Hearts of Chaos, you know. So um, yeah, we've, we've, we've worked with the best producers in the world, and we will continue doing it. That's great because you, you don't want to overproduce because then it's harder to exactly, it's harder exactly. to recreate on stage. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, if you overproduce shit, it's it's not you fool yourself. Mm. And um, to me, it's not necessary. <laughs> you know, the band is strong as, as we are and it's, it's, it's good uh, everything is good as it is and there's no need of like overproducing stuff and uh, I think if you work with a producer it's, it's important to find like the balance between um, between uh, the influence of uh, somebody from from with an outside point of view and uh, um, and, 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 and and the strength of the band someone that's producing an album has to be able to see the strong parts and make the not so strong parts stronger mm -hmm. and um, work on the songs that's the, that's the, that's the most important thing that a lot of people tend to forget a lot of people to me it seems like a lot of bands go into the studio to have a reason to tour that's the wrong way I, in my opinion I only do an album when I have something to say and I feel very strong about like new songs because this album Hearts of Chaos, we recorded in the summer of 2008, so it's gonna be four years when we put it out, and uh, yeah, we, it will be great. So, you're not under any pressure from the record company to sort of say, no, yeah. no, 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 no. I mean, we can, like I said, I, they, they, it's impossible for, to put us under pressure anyway because they know and we know that 
with creator it's not like it's not like that you know we're not a band like there's certain like I said there are certain bands that that just put out an album every every other year or something and it's it's every album is like okay but we we know that our fans um, expect us to come, come up with something great and it's either it's either like it's either like very very good or, or we don't even bother you know it's I, if I don't feel it it won't happen you know and uh, what's your reaction like from the English audience I mean do you, do you like coming to the UK oh it's one of my favorite places man definitely it's um, it's sometimes hard for us it's it's, it's around the corner but um, coming to the UK seems a little tricky at some points you know um, and uh, we should come in more often in my opinion um, but uh, we're working on it. <laughs> It'd be nice for you to do a headlining tour yeah, of the UK. Yeah, we did the, la the last headlining real tour. We always play London, but um, the last headlining tour was with Celtic Frost, and um, we should we should do another one. I, I'm, I'm, we had some plans, but then they fell apart because of uh, um, because you know the bands that we we wanted to tour with. One person got sick, whatever. And um, so, yeah, for the next album, definitely, we will come. But it's getting hard, harder and harder to find the venues nowadays, I think. They're clo closing all over the place. Know. Is it? Is it yeah. like that in the UK? I think it's in the UK, and I think in, in some places in Europe as well, there seems to be a lot of venues closing down. All right. Um, in Germany, we're spoiled, you know. I mean, we have, like, venues all over the place. So, um, yeah, I can see what you mean, because there's a couple of great venues that we used to play that are not... They went out of business, or something, you know. But um, in the US, uh, in the UK, we played some great venues. But then you had to have the problem with the curfew here. It's like two, uh, ten o'clock. You have to. This show has to be over. You know, that's that's very. Uh, that's 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 very unique. You know, we yes. we didn't we never um, seen that anywhere in the world. <laughs> but it's. Um, I think it's there's a reason for it, right? Yeah. So some 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 other things that happen after the bands fuck off you know <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something to do with what they call the noise abatement law yeah, so it's a very old old english law that yeah, should be scrapped yeah, really yeah whatever but um <laughs> it's yeah it's, it's just so strange to see that happen in the uk you know yeah. you would have figured that some i don't know but not in the uk this is where it all started man <laughs> and uh yeah um but but other than that we we always have a great time coming over here and um, like I said, we're working on a real tour. I'm always asked, well, I've been asked to ask you guys, uh, which is the best venue you've ever played and or the best gig that you stands out in your mind saying, God, that is the best venue I've ever played or best gig oh I've ever God. played. Oh my God, there's so many, man. I mean, um, it always depends on the circumstances. Sometimes you play the best venue in the world and the show is still not so good. Um, it has to be, everything has to be... Uh, the moment has to be there. The, the 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 vibe has to be there. The audience has to be there, and um, the band has to be strong. You know, so um, you know, good venues in London. There's this called the Coco, yeah. which is a great venue. Um, other than that, um, I'd say there's one. There's a couple of venues in the U.S. like the House of Blues in in L.A. is a great venue. Um, the uh, there's one uh, Rasmatas in Spain and, and um, this is just some ve random venues that stick yeah. that, that come to my mind right now and uh, it's a German venue in uh, Oberhausen called um, the uh, the um, uh, Tubinal. so those are the the venues that I can think of right now but there's so many like I said and what what is it Festivals are really strange animals, as I call it, because you, you only get a certain time, and you've got if the sound's not right, you still got to plow through. I mean, um, have you had a really bad festival where the sounds all been shit and everything's gone wrong or anything like that? We had a we played seventeen festivals. We will we have three more left, uh, two more after this. Um, there's only been. Two festivals where we had problems. One was in Holland, but that, that was our fault. We we had a bad day and there was some technical problems. 
Um, one was at Sonisphere in Switzerland. Yeah. Um, that festival to me wasn't, I mean, a lot of bands complained, you know, they had like three stages. Have you been there at Switzerland? No, Switzerland. Uh, a lot of bands complained. If you know, you know, we had like a couple of bands on the on the big stage, on the main stage, and they probably had a good show. But there was two other stages, like side stages, that you could play. And I'm like, no, this is not this is not my world. It seemed like a, you know, some. I heard horror stories from bands that I friends we were friends with from the Ozfest in the U.S. And it reminded me of that. You know, you had like three stages and bands were playing at the same time. So we played the same time as Iron Maiden did, you know, and also our friends from uh, from Cavalera Conspiracy, they played at the same time, and of course, how can you have a good show when you play, you know, next, you know, ah, that wasn't good. That seemed to me like a McDonald's kind of thing, you know, like a franchise uh, um, form of, of, of uh, festivals, but um, I guess that's had, that has also has to do with the with the, the, the fact that here in Europe festivals have become really big, and now a lot of people want to have a piece of the cake, of course, you know. But uh, I think the quality and and the um, and and you know, if you if you make a festival with like tons of bands, give the give the the, the, the audience the opportunity to see them all. You know what what there's no use if you have like the best lineup in the world if if you can't catch all the bands. You know, it's it's, it's no use and. Uh, but that was the only like it was still a good great good show you know don't get me wrong and we still had a great time there um, it could have been better <laughs> <laughs> and finally have you got anything you'd like to say to the English people out there that are watching um, yeah thanks for the support of course and um, like I said um, we love coming here and uh, we will come more often in the future <laughs> great. thanks very much alright then thank you, thank you.